Hi everyone, John Pokertrip Friedberg here with another episode of Stacking Chips, your strategy source for the 2007 World Series of Poker, the Bellagio Cup, and the dozens of other events going on right here in lovely Las Vegas. Today is Sunday and it is day 1C of the main event I'm playing today. And uh, as you can see, I'm wearing this nice bib here from the Palm Restaurant. I have to wear this for day one, or for my day one today, because I lost a bet. Last night, uh, a couple friends of mine and I went over to the Palm Restaurant in Caesars and uh, had a, a nice steak and lobster dinner. And my friend Jed Weisbluth and Matt Reitenauer, um, the three of us went. And I told them that I could eat by myself a six-pound lobster and a nine-ounce filet. And um, the penalty was, um, if I couldn't finish it, then I had to wear this uh, lovely bib here for the entire day one for my World Series. And um, I definitely could not finish it. I can eat a lot, but uh, I guess my eyes were bigger than my mouth on that one. So here I am, I'm wearing a bib. I have to wear it all day today. And, uh, but the Palm Restaurant did say that they would give me a steak and lobster dinner for free <laughs> if I wore it. So how's that for a great endorsement? But anyway, so uh, again, today's Sunday. It's the third day. I'm going to tell you why I chose this day to start the main event. Um, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, as you know, the, the World Series main event has four starting days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And here's my thought process for the tournament. And I usually, I, I know this might sound a little silly, but I actually do try to strategically choose which starting day I enter in any big tournament. So with the starting days of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, there's obviously a lot of dead money in this tournament. I think um, most of the people that have normal jobs, um, they're obviously working on Friday and working on Monday. So I think most of the really dead money, like the, the career people that aren't professional poker players, are going to be choosing Saturday and Sunday as their starting days. So I knew I wanted to play on Saturday or Sunday. And then of course Sunday is the big online day with all the major tournaments. And I know a lot of the online players don't want to miss the online tournaments, so I think they're the fewest amount of the better online players are going to be playing on Sunday. So I personally feel that the, the, uh, the strong online players are the best players in the world, as I always say, and I think they're the most difficult to play against. So I feel that I have the biggest edge on a Sunday because it's going to be a lot of dead money, um, the f a few, fewer, like the smallest ratio of professionals, and of course the smallest ratio of online players as well. So that's why I picked today. And um, again, I haven't even cashed in the World Series main event in the last three years. In 2004, I made it to day two. 2005 and 2006, I ended around the dinner break in day one. And as I mentioned yesterday, I haven't even made it above the 12,000 chip mark in the World Series main event. And of course, the last three years, we started with 10,000 chips. This year, we're starting with 20. So I guess right away, I, I will finally break that mark. But um, of course, I'm hoping for a big score. I certainly do, and um, you know, thank you to all my friends and family and whatever else for all the support along the way. I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my strategy today, and then I also have a list of like the the top ten don'ts in tournament poker. The John Friedberg top ten things not to do when you play a tournament. But uh, first of all, so my strategy is a lot like other people's. Um, a lot of dead money in this event. It's, uh, it's a fairly deep stack event, although not quite as deep stack as most WPT events. We're starting with 20,000 in chips, the so blinds are going to be 5,100, and um, so there's a lot of room for error, a lot of room for play in this tournament compared to other World Series events. But what I like to do in deep stack events like this is really sit back, play very tight early. And um, I'm going to try, of course, to establish an image, but more importantly, I'm going to try to get a read on the other nine players at my table. I'm going to find out who I should be going after, who's scared, who's inexperienced, and of course who I should stay away from. And um, it usually doesn't take me too long to figure that out. I'd say if all 10 players show up right away, um, it usually won't take more than 20-30 minutes to get a fairly good read on everyone at the table. And then of course through the next hour or two, you know, you really sort of fine tune your reads on the other players. And you know, some of the things I look for are how well or how poorly do they handle chips. Um, how well or poorly do they do they size their bets in relation to the pot? You know, you'll see with with a lot of um, inexperienced players in 50, 100 blinds with 20,000 starting chips, they'll they'll bring it in for uh, you know for 800, 
and, or they're blaming them for a thousand on a hundred dollar big blind, which is just a terrible thing to do, regardless of what you have. And um, anyway, see, so I look for those things. I look for fear in people's eyes and body language. Um, I'll look for people with shaky hands. I'll be trying to pay attention to people's styles of play, whether they limp a lot, whether they raise a lot, whether they play a lot of hands, whether they continuation bet after they raise. And those are really the primary factors that I'll be looking for. And like I said, um, I think my biggest targets are really going to be the, the players that I consider the low-hanging fruit. And those are the ones that like to play a lot of hands, like to commit chips, but also get very scared and they're easy to get off of hands. Those are the guys that are easy to bluff. Those are the guys that, uh, that I like to try to go after initially. Um, but that said, my general strategy is to play relatively tight, um, limit my hands to suited connectors. Um, of course, you know, big aces. I like suited aces, whether it's an ace five or an ace seven, I don't really care as long as I can get in for cheap. Um, I'm going to be very cautious with hands like ace king, um, aces, kings, Yes, those are great hands, but in a deep stack tournament, they're very dangerous. And um, so I'm going to be very cautious to not commit too many chips with aces until I have a pretty good read on where I am in the hand. You know, if you raise it with pocket aces and you get two callers behind you in a deep stack tournament, you know that people's range of hands to call you with are much wider because there's so much more margin of like room for error. So people are more likely to call you in that spot with like a 4-5 or you know an 8-10 or jack-9 or something because they know if they miss a flop they still have a ton of chips. It's not like they only have 3,000 in chips and if they miss a flop then you know they've lost 20 percent of their stack already so I'm gonna be very cautious. So if I raise with aces for example and I get two or three callers behind me and the flop comes 7-8-9 most likely I'm done with the hand. I might make a continuation bet to try to find out where I'm at but for the most part I'm really gonna play very conservative tight yet aggressive and uh, again try to um, pinpoint the players that I'm looking to go after and of course those that I'm looking to stay away from while at the same time trying to build an image for myself. Um, I can't really tell you what that image is because if if I'm at a table with a bunch of loose players I'm going to establish my image as being tight. If I'm at a table with a bunch of loose or sorry tight players um, I'm going to try to create an image that's more aggressive so I'm really going to adjust to the table and uh, depending on how the table's playing, that's really how I'm going to try to sort of program myself in their eyes. And, um, you know, the people who are scared, I'm going to make them fear me. I'm going to show them only big hands. Um, the people who I think I can trap for a lot of chips, I'm going to show them weak hands and just try to set people up throughout the day. But again, I'm just going to play conservative, try to build a stack, and then, of course, use that stack later on in the day to make some plays and of course keep readjusting my play depending on my stack size, depending on my opponents, etc, etc. Alright, so I have a top 10 list of things not to do in tournaments and these aren't really in any particular order and this, this isn't really a, anything that has to do with what hands to play or anything. It's more of sort of a um, like a table etiquette thing if you will and you know when you play in tournaments that have a lot of a lot of these players don't have much live poker experience. A lot of them are you know, used to playing in home games where you can high five each other and, you know, tell your friend to go screw himself after you beat him out of a pot and things and jump up and scream. So people are used to that setting, but you just don't do a lot of that stuff in tournament poker in a live casino environment, especially in the World Series. So that said, I'm going to run off sort of the top 10 things that I think people should not do. And again, this is not really in any particular order, but uh, again, this is good advice for all you fish out there. First of all, don't ever announce that you had the same hand as someone at your table who was all in until after the hand is over. Now what I mean by that is very frequently two players will get all their chips in preflop, one guy will turn over ace-king, the other guy will, will turn over pocket nines. If you have the ace-king, the last thing you want to hear is some you know, jerk next to you that says, oh, I folded an ace also. Because you know, now where you think you're going in is a race with, with you know, six outs you know, five times basically. Now you know there's an ace dead or whatever, and conversely, or similarly, if you have those pocket nines, you don't want to hear some jackass say, oh man, I folded a nine, because it's just, it's not good, it's not right. Wait till the hand is over, and then say, yeah, I folded a nine also, and you know, if, he, if the guy catches the case nine, let him know he caught the case nine or whatever. Don't do it before the hand, it's just not necessary to do that. Secondly, don't slow roll your opponents. Now what I mean by that, a lot of people know what this is, a lot of people don't, and what I mean by that is, Let's say you have the nuts, and some guy check or some guy bets in you. You raise, and he calls, 
and then you like wait and see his hand before you turn over the nuts. If you have the nuts and all the betting is over, show your hand. The only time you should slow roll and not show your hand right away is when there's multiple players in the pot and all the action is over, the hand is over, the person closest to the button is supposed to show his or her hand first. So if you're, you know, if there's three people in front of you and you know you have a good hand, you don't have to show yours until they've already showed theirs. But again, don't slow your, op your opponents. Another example is some guy raises all in and you're in the big blind and you got pocket aces. Of course you're going to call. Don't sit there and say, well, how much is it? And mm, I think I'm going to call. Yeah, I have pocket aces. It's just rude to do that and nobody likes to have that happen to them. So don't do that to other people. Third thing, and I see this a lot. Don't say nice hand to your opponent after you beat him in a pot, or after you beat him in a hand. Yes, pocket kings is a very nice hand, but not when it loses a pot. If I lose a pot, I don't want some guy to say, oh, yeah, yeah, you had a nice hand, buddy, because I didn't have a nice hand. He had the nice hand, and he beat me. My hand is not a nice hand. Don't say nice hand to your opponent after you beat him. Okay, another one, and I, I, again, I see a lot of people do this too, and I never do this. Don't walk over and shake an opponent's hand after you bust him out of the tournament. Yes, it's a courteous thing, it's a friendly thing to shake someone's hand. Let them initiate it. Usually when I get knocked out or when people get knocked out of a tournament, they're upset. They're, they're either mad at how they played, they're mad at you know uh, making a mistake, they're mad that their cards didn't hold up, um, they're mad that you got lucky against them. It's almost kicking them while they're down if you walk right over to them and be like, hey man, it was good playing with you, nice hand, or you know, good game or whatever. It's okay to say good game. In fact, it's nice to say good game, but don't walk over and shake their hand. If they want to be, you know, polite about it, they can walk over and shake your hand. If not, understand that they're upset and that they have to get all their crap and leave the table and go home. And, you know, again, there's just no need to walk over and shake their hand. Let them initiate that. Don't initiate it for them. Um, this one you, you hear a lot around the poker room. Um, don't jump on your chair and scream after you win a big pot. Now, all the time during the World Series will be in the first hour and you'll hear some guy like yelling and screaming and clapping and you know telling everyone that you know I'm the daddy or you know <laughs> I'm the best player in the world or whatever he won a pot maybe he doubled up maybe he tripled up it's still early in the tournament and it's just unnecessary again you don't want to be the guy who just lost a hand and then have some asshole next to you jumping and screaming and you know just making you feel like crap because you just lost a hand so just be a good sport you know, if it's a huge pot or a key situation, maybe you can chell or yell or, you know, give it a fist or clap or run over and high-five your friends or something. But don't, you know, don't be too obnoxious over it. I mean, basically, a beer can's not going to fall out of the sky when you do that, but you're still going to be a little bitch for acting like that <laughs> if you do do it. So just don't do it. Um, another thing, this happens a lot. Don't go play a tournament if you don't wear deodorant. And you guys know who you are. There's so many people in poker, especially these big men, who just freaking stink. You guys come in these tournament rooms, you, you know, you sweat from all the adrenaline, the activity, the excitement, and you stink. And maybe you don't smell it, maybe you do, but we're sitting next to you and we have to smell it all day. So be courteous to others, wear deodorant. If you have a body odor problem, that's fine. A lot of people do. You know, we all sweat, we all smell when we sweat. If you sweat or smell excessively, bring a, you know, a thing of deodorant with you. Put it in your bag. We all carry bags. Bring like a, you know, a little thing in your pocket or something, but don't subject us to disgusting body odor in a tournament. It's just, you know, it's not a nice thing to do. You know, in the tent here in the World Series or the atrium or whatever room they call it, it's been sometimes like 95 degrees in there. We all sweat. It's gross. I carry a stick of deodorant on me just in case I'm stuck in that tent and I start to smell. You guys should all do the same. Um... Another thing, don't explain why you played a certain way or what you think your opponent had after you beat him in a pot. Again, there's, you need to be cautious. Well, you should be cautious and you should be respectful after you beat someone with a pot. They're grumpy. They're angry. They don't want you to come over and shake their hand a lot of the times. Um, they don't want you to sit there and say, oh, you know, I, I just, I was so scared that you had pocket aces, you know, and my hand wasn't going to be good. You beat them. You got their chips. They lost, they're upset about it, so don't sit there and try to like explain why you played the hand, why you raised, what you thought he had. It doesn't matter. You got the chips, take the chips quietly, or you know, high five your friends or whatever, and just don't rub it in. It's just not a nice thing to do. And again, a lot of people do this in home games because it's it's no big deal. The stakes are small, you know, maybe they're your friends, that's cool. But when you're playing for millions of dollars, you know, at you know, up for grabs here in a ten thousand buy-in tournament. Again, you, when you lose, 
the player you beat is not your friend <laughs> and they're not going to respond the same as your friend and they don't want to hear you say that stuff. It's just going to get under their skin. Now, if you're trying to get under their skin, that's a different story. But if, you, if you're trying to be friendly about it, it's just the wrong thing to do. Um, next one. Don't ask to see your opponent's cards after you beat them in a hand. Now, you certainly have the right, according to tournament rules, if a player calls a bet on the river, um, that even if that person loses the pot, if somebody asks to see that person's cards, they're entitled to see the cards. Now, sometimes it makes sense to do that. Most of the time, it doesn't. But again, when you beat someone out, when you when you beat someone in a pot, don't ask to see their cards. Again, that's just kicking them kicking them while they're down. If somebody else asks to see their hands, that's fine because maybe somebody wants to learn something about an opponent. It's not the nicest thing to do at a table because it does piss people off. It's almost like calling a clock on someone. You know, there are the right times to do it, and of course there's not. But again, if you beat someone in a pot, don't ask to see their cards. Let, either let someone else ask them or just don't ask them at all. It doesn't matter. You won the pot. That's all that mattered. Um, the last one that I have is, see, a lot of these people like doing this, you know, Hollywood stall. And again, there are some times when it's appropriate to sit and hum and haw and, you know, scratch your ear and, you know, look uncomfortable and do all this crap, this acting job when you have a good hand but you're pretending like you don't, I'd say more often than not, don't do that. It's just silly, especially when you're down to heads up. Um, you know, yeah, you may want to drama, you know, dramatize some hands a little bit, but don't sit there and just go crazy on the Hollywood stall. I think the only time it's almost appropriate is when there's a big bet and there's still, you know, a couple of players behind you and, you know, you're going to call off all your chips yet you know you have the nuts or you know you have pocket aces preflop or whatever but again there's still players behind you to act so you're trying to sort of entice them to come in because you're trying to look weak but again don't overdo that because you know again it's it's just it's almost like angle shooting your opponents you just more often than not people can read right through it so not only are you like screwing with your own chances here because you're giving away a huge tell but it's kind of just sort of a, a jerk thing to do so that's really it. Those are my top 10 don'ts in tournament poker. And, um, you know, just I like it when people play fairly, play, you know, with high code of ethics, if you will. And, um, yeah, that's really it. So that said, I wish everyone the best of luck in the World Series this year. I don't know how many players they're going to get overall, but if I had to guess, I'm guessing right around 6,000 based on the number of entrants I've seen from uh, the last two days. And I have no idea how many are in today's event. But uh, anyway, again, I'm looking to go in there and hopefully take charge and take some names. And uh, best of luck to everyone, and thanks to all my family and friends, and, of course, my sponsor and sort of Palm Restaurant for uh, forcing me to wear this bib, but giving me a nice free dinner. Um, well, that's all. That's it for today's episode of Stacking Chips. Make sure to tune in for the rest of the World Series during the main event. I'm going to have a lot of uh, big-name pros in here that have already agreed to come on the show. I'm excited to have them on here. And, of course, keep those emails coming in to stackingchips at cardplayer.com. I haven't gone through the emails in a few days, but they are accumulating, and I am going to go through them in the next few days here. So keep those emails coming in, stackingchips at cardplayer.com. And, again, best of luck to everyone. Have a good day, and I will see you guys tomorrow.